While you're settling in, I'll just uh, say a little bit about this committee here, right? Um, Alejandra Plashinsky is, uh, has been a silent voice till now. She'll be introducing Malini, but she was a student in the course last semester, and she was really the most persistent per brainchild, if you will, of this idea. So Alejandra said, we should have a, a TEDx. I'm ready to do what it takes. Let's make it happen. And that's, that's why, really, we were kind of spurred with that. Ian Johnstone is here. I think I'd uh, mentioned that there was a student who was saying throughout the semester that uh, she wants to make this happen. Now, Leland Lazarus, who you saw earlier, right? Uh, Leland, just stand up. Here's, um, he's, I mean, he's been a TA, like a fearless leader for the class. And just take a look at him and mark my words. He is going to be a president in the future. Okay? And not just because he looks like Obama. Okay? Because he's a balance of hard work, humility, intelligence, and he's really been a, a spearheading force for this. Megan, I've been blessed with uh, another just amazing TA for the course and a champion of public speaking. She's probably ushering people in. Oh, she's right here. <laughs> Megan has, it's just such a, such a joy yesterday. She had to decide between Fletcher Follies or, or working with one of our speakers. And she made a decision. So Megan, I mean, just publicly, I want to thank you for how amazing you've been. <laughs> and, and then there's Mary Dulatre, the head of student affairs, who's been here. She's been part of the first first public speaking movement, and she's just so engrossed in her work that she's, she's missing out on some of this fun. And I just want to very publicly thank you sincerely for, for all your support for, uh, to date. How about a little round of applause, please, for, for the, this organizing committee. <laughs> and now that we are all settling in, and Mary's given the thumbs up, Alejandra is going to give you just a little more of an introduction on Malini. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. Um, how lucky are we to have Melanie here, honestly, and particularly because her work truly reflects her major, or her studies during Fletcher. Of course, international environment and resource policy are very, very linked to this documentary that she's going to present. I'm kidding. What I'm trying to say is, <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that inspiration doesn't necessarily come where we look for it. Uh, and a true story of this, what inspiration, how inspiration comes and what we convey with it is what Melanie will show us. So give it a hand for Melanie. Well, thank you for that extraordinary introduction. Thank you so much. I am so thrilled to be back at Fletcher. I love being at my alma mater. Uh, you guys will learn that when you go out of Fletcher, Fletcher stays with you. And you know, I've, I've run into Fletcher like classmates walking down the street in Bangkok. I mean, it's just, they're everywhere. So, I'm, so I thought when I walked in the front door, how, how would I feel? I just felt like I was at home. So thanks for having me back home. Um, today I'm going to talk about um, a short documentary that I did. Um, as Alejandra said, it's not about, it, nothing connected with my major at Fletcher. Uh, but it was a personal life experience that inspired me. Um, to tell my story, and I want to share that with you, and I hope it'll inspire you to tell your story. How do you communicate? Uh, as for me, I'm a pack rat. I have thousands of letters in my closet. I have VHS tapes. I have old photos. I have tons of old media, right? That Usually all of it that's relegated to an old hard drive or a closet. You don't think anything of it, but really it's a treasure trove in there. There's so many things you don't think you could use. Um, today I want to talk about a lot of video I, I, I did, I took, I had archival footage and it turned out to be the basis of my documentary. Um, so I'll talk about, um, oh, one thing I wanted to mention is all that old media that you have, um, it's a treasure trove that can be used with all the new methodologies out there to communicate. You can actually blend it all together and use it for effective storytelling and messaging. And that's what I did for my documentary. So what happened? Why am I telling a story to you today? Three years after I graduated from Fletcher, uh, I was working in the environmental field. And then, boom, um, my dad had an accident. Um, and he broke his neck. And it paralyzed him from the neck down. Uh, and he had the same level of injury as Christopher Reeve. Uh, he was on a ventilator. And being an Indian dad, he didn't want to be a burden on us. So he decided to disconnect his ventilator. And I didn't know what to do. I'm also a lawyer. And I thought, OK, well, 
I'll just talk to the forensic psychiatric team and we'll get it covered. Well, not so much because he's competent and he could do that. So to empower myself, I just pulled out my handheld video camera and started filming. And I didn't look at the footage for six years. Uh, incidentally, um, I ran into a Fletcher classmate in 2013. And uh, she did a documentary on female infanticide in Armenia. And I said, you know, I have this old footage that I want to do. I want to do something with. She said, make a documentary. I said, I have no idea how to do that. I can't even use iMovie. And um, so, but it got me thinking and I thought, well, let me set out to do this and figure out how to do it. The first thing I did is I looked at my assets. What did I have to make a documentary? So I had that archival footage, hours and hours of it, 30, 40 hours. Um, this is just a screen grab from the documentary. What else did I have? Uh, my mom, she's a doctor, but she had, she's another one that had media in her closet. Uh, she recorded an album 25 years ago. And um, actually, the funny thing was, she, the same time I was doing the documentary, she put it on YouTube. She's like, oh, beta, I put it on YouTube. And I was like, oh, that's great. <laughs> and uh, I listened to it, and <laughs> the words are literally a soundtrack to her life and just fit right into the documentary. So I had music. I used my mom's music. NPR, um, NPR, NPR done an article about my dad. Um, we got him a, a traveling board so he could vote uh, in the last presidential election. I took the audio from that and used that in the documentary. And those old photos that are embarrassing, but they really tell a story. My dad was traveling the world with my mom. You know, we had a nice childhood. And then, you know, how things change. So um, then, now what? I have all this stuff. I have all my resources. Like, I'm sure you have you know, all your, all your media, and I mean, you're Fletcherites, you've got amazing stories to tell. I don't mean, there must be a million countries you've been to and so many stories you have to tell, but how do you tell it? Um, I took a guerrilla filmmaking class in New York City because I didn't know what I was doing. Learned lighting, I narrated myself, set up my camera, bought a tripa tripod, um, started just learning, 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 took a 10-day course, went through all my footage, narrated it together, and thought about what I wanted to tell and try to keep it simple. And I put that together. And then I'm like, oh, editing. You know, the 800-pound gorilla in the room. Like, what, what do I do with editing? Sign up for Apple one-to-one, -one, uh, $99, and then just worked it to the max. I think I probably use it more than anyone else who's used Apple one-to-one. -one. Went to Apple like 65, 70 times. Each time I'd be there for two hours, sometimes five hours. I'd live there. I got a reputation there. And um, edited. You know, so yeah, I didn't know iMovie. And now I can, you know, maybe, you know, I, I, I know Final Cut Pro. And I, I edited the whole thing on my own. So if you want to tell a story, there's a way to tell it. You can just, if you're inspired enough, you'll find a way to tell it. And now I want to share with you some clips from the film and um, talk about a few little methodologies I used during the making of the film. And we're going to look at the, um, the trailer first. You're the best dad in the world. How many dads have you had? <laughs> you know, your your choice and your decision, whichever way it is going to be. My last five months, I've been able to find her. But it rained last night. So therefore, uh, hanging on the cliff has become a little more difficult. You can see all that archival footage that would have been sitting in my closet became something. It became something to tell a story. And now I'm going to share with you. And by the way, the name should tomorrow be. Uh, I was just chatting with a cousin, and you know we were talking about 
you know, we don't know if tomorrow will come. That's why you have to live every moment today. And uh, so that's what it was. So um, we're going to show you just four short clips from the movie um, to demonstrate a few things. The first one I want to show is stringing together that music from my mom, the NPR audio, those old photos, and the archival footage. He injured his spine in a fall at his home in Sherrillville, Indiana, near Chicago. His injury is identical to that of the late Superman actor Christopher Reeve. Before the fall, Dr. Goyle, a retired cardiologist, was active, traveling the world with his wife. Now he can't feel any part of his body below his neck and breathes through a ventilator. You can see you pull all those things together, and that was just done after hours and hours and hours at Apple, putting everything together, even making sure the words go with the pictures. And, um, and the next clip is, uh, you know, I studied international environment, environment and resource policy and conflict resolution. So the next one takes negotiating and conflict resolution to extreme, and also uh, reminds us that even though this is a poignant story and life is tough, you need a little bit of humor, too. Being an Indian father, of course, you wanted to get us married. Um, both kids have, have been very successful in dodging Cupid's arrows so far. You wanted both of us to get married in the next two days. Uh, yeah, that wasn't going to happen. You getting married? Yeah, I don't think that would be ideal. Oh, in two days? That seems a little soon. Mm -hmm. Well, then don't die in two days. And then somebody loves me? More important? Who says cool cats? Cool? There's lots of cool people. Cool. Jane? Jerks. Lots of cool jerks. I was trying to find a nice guy, Dad. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a right to die story, but there's some humor in it. And, it's, and it's, it shows how we use humor to handle the difficulties in life, too. So I, I made sure that I put that in documentary at choice at chosen area so that people aren't going to be totally Debbie Downer and walk out of the movie theater. And just to show you that this is real, this is unscripted. Um, the next one I want to show you is um, we had, um, I had a community member uh, in our Chicago community, a 17-year-old girl who composed a piano piece um, for this. And I juxtaposed it, with, juxtaposed it with dialogue. And the music makes it so powerful, I even had a hard time editing because it even moved me so much. Maybe I would want to die too, I don't know. Everything that comes, someday has to go. But what if we don't want it to go? Wait till you die to God. That's the Lord's will. But what if I have a chat with God? Maybe he'll change then my mind. Maybe you should have a chat with God. Are you chatting with God? All the time. When I went home to sleep, I would play tug of war with God. I was telling God, spare him. We can handle it. Just don't take him. Just don't take my dad. We can handle this. I don't really remember filming, but I do remember subconsciously wanting to document my dad's last moments. I wanted to hold on to them so they would never die, even if he did. I pray for the happiness of them. So that, that was a lot more. I don't know if it touched you the way it touched me, but the music really, you know, it bring, it's another tool you can use. And again, what are your assets? It was just a 17-year-old in our community who was like, sure, I want to do the music. 
And the last clip I want to show you is I'm, I'm not going to tell you the ending of the movie, because then you wouldn't go watch it. And, uh, but um, I want to talk about using silence, because sometimes silence is the loudest way to convey your message. I just wanted to say that I love you, Dad. This is also a friend's music. As long as there's life, there's hope, right? And how sacred is the flight, the feeling of full morning mist, fear spread like butter over. For when I get married one day, can I have your blessings, Dad? So in that clip, I tried many different things, music, ambient noise, and the best thing I thought was just silence, because I thought that was the most powerful way to convey the distance that was being created. So there's more. You're not going to see it, but this is what I, I, I've, I've showed you. And um, a picture is worth a thousand words. Video was the right way for me to do my project, was the right medium uh, that I used. And um, just want to thank you very much for uh, watching. and then. There's one more. And um, yeah, oh yeah. Oh, one more picture, one of my favorites, our cat. And, uh, and that's a sip and puff wheelchair. Um, and uh, he can operate that with uh, a straw. And so, um, you know, he can do laps around the, you know, the driveway. And um, the film has won some awards and will be premiering in New York at the New York Indian Film Festival on May 9th. Um, as you mentioned, uh, it's being used uh, for palliative care physicians, so doctors can be better empowered when they're dealing with patients who uh, deal with life and death decisions. For instance, we had no help uh, during that time. There was no one I could talk to, so um, we just submitted, I just submitted an abstract with a physician for a conference next year also um, that can empower care providers and patients, and uh, who knows what else the journey will be. Um, so I was inspired to tell my story what is your story? I would love to give you that inspiration, and I hope to see your story one day, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.